Hi again, it's Charles from Electric Owl Works. Wanted to give you a quick update. I posted a picture of a, of a drum set with a garden hose under it, and um, we've just finished up basic tracks with upstate New York band Acme Anvil Corp. And before the drum set gets totally torn down and the mics are put back in the locker, I wanted to document and share uh, what we did. Okay, we recorded drums with the studio's uh, kit, which is a vintage uh, late 80s set of Yamahas. We used a modified Glenn Johns uh, setup. Uh, for the overheads, we have Octava MK012s. Um, they're both about 48 inches from the snare, uh, which is out because the drummer took the snare with them. And it's modified because the drummer that we recorded was about six foot four. So we had to kind of spread things out a little bit. On the kick, we used an, an EV PL33. The snare, of course, was a 57 on top, didn't bother on the bottom. It was also modified because we threw some extra mics in on the toms, um, just for fun. So uh, we have Sennheiser E604s, which are the clip-on ones, and we clip those on the top three toms, so on the 10-inch, 12-inch, and the 13-inch. And then we used another EV PL33 on the floor tom. And the PL33s folks don't usually talk about, but they're really nice for kick drums, uh, floor toms, and for bass amps. Um, so if you haven't checked one out, it's worth, it's definitely worth, worth checking. Now on the hi-hat, what we did, we have a Golden Age uh, Project FC4. It's a small diaphragm mic, requires phantom power. And we put one of those, we, we put a sterling shield up there. Uh, it's, it's an acoustic shield. It does a fairly good job of keeping the bleed from the snare and the rest of the kit out. Um, so that, that worked quite well on the hi-hat. And then for the room, what we did, another Golden Age uh, project, they have a ribbon mic. It's the R1 Active Mark III, which is a pretty fun mic. Um, this one, you can shoot phantom power into it. And it works very well. It's got um, it's got a low pass filter. It's got a pad on it, and uh, it works very well. Um, now we also the, re the main reason why I'm filming this, I guess, is because I did post a picture of the garden hose on Twitter, and a few folks have been asking about it. So as you can see, we've got a garden hose running around the kit. And uh, this is about a 12 or 15 footer, because again, the, the drummer was 6'4", so the kit was spread out more than normal. And there's an interesting technique. If you don't know who Sylvia Massey is, and that's M-A-S-S-Y, she has a, a great book called Recording Unhinged, and she's worked with a lot of great bands, including Tool. And the whole idea, I think, of putting a microphone on the end of a garden hose came from the, the Cooper Time Cube, which was an early 70s echo which basically was a garden hose with a speaker on one end and a microphone on the other end, and depending on the length of the hose, it gave you an, an echo. And if you know the speed of sound and how that works, it roughly is one millisecond per foot. So if you wanted like a 20 millisecond slap back, you'd need like 20 foot of garden hose. I think what Sylvia does is she does duct tapes of 57 onto the end of a garden hose. We wanted to do something that I can protect the 57 with. So, I went to one of the home improvement superstores and they have this white contraption that looks like it's from the Death Star and I, I believe it's called a plumbing repair flange. Piece of foam insulation here which you would use to insulate hot water pipes and wrap the 57 in it and then jam it in the end, jam it in this end of the flange and then the garden hose attaches here. The, the beauty of this is that if you have a drummer, let's say, you know, the ghost of Keith Moon shows up and uh, drinks are flying or a cymbal falls or something like that, this creates an airtight and waterproof uh, space for that 57 to live. What I've done is wrapped the 57 itself in foam, which is a, the foam you would use to insulate a hot water pipe and just stuck it in the end. And what it does is it, it gives you a built-in shock mount, it's airtight, and it works very well. So I'm... I've always been a big fan of the Glenn John style of, uh, of mic'ing up drums. You can sum it to mono, um, it sounds great. If you do it right, 
uh, it sounds great in stereo. The only really gotcha is you got to make sure that the two overheads are the same distance from the snare drum and if possible as close as possible to the same distance from the kick drum as well. Uh, the other trick is that you make sure you're, you check each overhead first and make sure you got it where you want it. So each overhead sounds good by itself and then when you have the two overheads and then pan those two overheads, one left, one right, uh, depending on the actual mic placement, you get a nice stereo field. And depending on how the drummer plays, it'll sound really, really good with uh, w without tom mics. Um, you, 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 of course, supplement it with a kick drum mic and a snare mic and blend those four, and either, and if you've done it right, um, either in mono or stereo, you'll, you'll get a great sound. Um, while I was tracking Acme Anvil Corp, well, they're doing their vocals and uh, overdubs on uh, rhythm guitars and so forth. All I had up was the two overheads and the kick and snare, and, and the drummer was absolutely thrilled with the sound. Um, this is a guy who's been recording for a while, and he was just sort of, you know, shocked at, at how great just those four mics sounded. And the trick is do the upfront work, get a tape measure, use a mic cable, make sure the distance between your overheads is, is, is exactly the same or as close as possible so you don't get weird phase problems and things and you can get a great sound. If you, if you tune the drums right, now that's the other thing, I'm a big fan of using our, our studio kits here. We've got a set of Rogers, two sets of Yamahas, Pearl, a Sonar Jazz kit, and I've got them all tuned in a similar fashion, kind of old school like John Bonham would do, where the bottom heads actually tune a little, little higher uh, than the top head. And they don't really, they really aren't muffled. If I get some weird ring, I'll use moon gels. But if you record in an old school fashion and have drums tuned in a classic way, you get really huge sounds. And you throw a room mic back there, and the old adage, a distance equals depth, that's true. You know, so I, I love the, the, the Glenn John's technique for recording drums. And I've always, and, and I know that I'm always going to have four mics that are going to work. If a, Tom Mike falls falls off a drum uh, during a take. You know, it might not be a showstopper. So as long as your four mics in the Glenn Johns technique are set up and working properly, even if another mic falls off a Tom or something happens to a room mic, you can probably still get a good sound. And depending on the genre of music, um, you know, you, you might not have to do a new take. The 604s sound great. The uh, trick with the Glenn Johns technique again is listen, you have to use your ears, listen and see where those toms are sitting uh, in your stereo field, depending if you spread your overheads, your left and right overheads, you know, 50% left and right or 75 or 100. Listen to where those toms are sitting, then dial in the individual tom tracks to match that. Uh, if, you're not, if you can't EQ the, the low end in that you want, try our bass. Uh, usually it's on sale. Um, it works very, very well. If you don't know the EV PL33, you should really take a look. Uh, it's a modestly priced dynamic microphone. It's designed for kick drums, floor toms, bass amps, and sort of low frequency sources. I know a lot of folks, and you know, myself included over the years, have used Sure Beta 52s or uh, AKG D112s on kick. And, and those are great. Those are absolutely great. But the PL33, it's a little, its frequency response is not so colored. It's not as scooped. If you're doing more, let's say, classic rock, I hate to say classic rock. If you're doing more classic rock, doing Americana, you're doing blues, you're doing something where you don't need that snap, that sort of death metal snappy sound on, on your kick drum. It, it's a more full-bodied flavor sort of microphone, so it's great on low-frequency sources. It can handle the SPL. It's great on, like I said, bass amps, floor toms, kick drums. They're not that much money. If you haven't tried one out, I know folks don't talk about them very much, and it's, I won't say like a secret weapon, but they're a really nice mic. You should check it out. On the high hat, I'm using a Golden Age project. FC4 small diaphragm condenser works great, works absolutely great. If you've got a drummer who you're getting a lot of bleed on the hi-hat and he or she does not want to move the hi-hat stand, get one of these. Uh, it works fairly well. 
It's just an acoustic shield. This is a sterling one. It's usually about 49 bucks. Sometimes you find them on sale at Guitar Center for $29. It works fairly well. If you're interested in what the Glenn Johns technique sounds like, just uh, leave a comment or a like down there. And if there's enough interest, I'll do another video uh, where I can show before and after processing EQ, compression, all that stuff uh, of the Glenn Johns technique, and then how I modify it by adding in uh, a couple additional mics. So um, great stuff. Let me know. If you are still with me, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for sticking around. And seriously, if you are just starting off or kind of new to recording, uh, there's so many great resources online. So first thing is whatever DAW you're using is the best DAW in the world. So I switched from uh, Pro Tools to Reaper years ago. Um, and if you're looking for Reaper help, take a look at Reaper Mania from Kenny Joya. Take a look at the Reaper blog. Uh, also Glenn Fricker at uh, Spectre Media, not too far north from where I am actually, um, has got some wonderful tutorials on online. I would encourage you to look up Sylvia Massey, M-A-S-S-Y. And like I said before, she recorded Tool and a ton of bands. And she's creative, does a lot of cool stuff, has a wonderful book out. Uh, she's on YouTube, Facebook. I don't know if she's on Twitter so much. Uh, so check her out. Also, Warren Hewitt uh, from Produce Like a Pro, another great resource online. He has sort of like a little academy online resources available. Uh, that R base trick Warren uses. And Warren, if you don't know Warren Hewitt, and that's H U A R T, if I'm not mistaken, um, he's recorded Aerosmith and tons of bands. So there's so many resources out there. Be creative, have fun, and uh, most importantly, be kind and be well. Thanks again. This is Charles from Electric Outworks. Peace.